Hi, I'm Jerry Hyde, Youth Services Librarian at the Ames Public Library, and welcome to Well Read, a program about a little bit of this and a little bit of that at your Ames Public Library. Last month, we talked about our tutoring and different things that were happening out in the community with our summer reading program. Um, this month, I actually have the people that are out in the field that are actually doing those tutoring type of programs and the outreach to our um, low-income neighborhoods and our bookmobile sites. So let me welcome Amy and Morgan to our um, show. And Amy, would you like to share a little bit about who you are and wh why you got the job here at the library as an intern for the summer? Um, well, I'm Amy Myers, like she said. I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. My major is Child Adult and Family Services. And uh, basically, I had done the program at Iowa State called Nonprofit Protege, where you get to go into a different nonprofit agency in the Ames community. And I did mine at the Ames Public Library. It was my sophomore year. And when I had heard about this from my advice, this internship about my, from my advisor this past year, I was really interested just because I loved my experience previously and I wanted to have more. So that's the biggest reason. And then amongst being able to work it with all the staff that I had met before was really cool. So yes, and and I know that had a little influence. It did a little the bit. Fact that, so you know, we knew who you were. and yeah. that you had protegeed with with us. Yeah, and, so it was really it was a great experience to have, so I'm and glad I got to do that. That was back when we were at 515 Douglas. Yeah. That seems like centuries I ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're here and you're um, doing some of the programs out outreaching mm -hmm. um, to the community and we'll come back to that but let, let's go ahead and hop on over to Morgan and let you introduce yourself. And yes. I am Morgan Selesky. Um, I'm from Hastings, Minnesota, a nice little suburb of the Twin Cities. And um, I came to Ames and I absolutely love it. I plan to stay here oh, for a year or two after I graduate um, following my internship this summer. And um, I am interning with the Raising Readers in Story County group. And I'm really enjoying my experience. There's a lot of very, very committed people within the program. And they've given me um, great opportunities to go out and um, coordinate this retutoring program, which we're um, getting a lot of feedback from the community that it's really doing a lot of good, so that's always exciting. Yeah. A very much wanted and, and needed yeah, program definitely. that and has been very well received. But let's take one step back. Can you repeat the class that you're taking that the internship is for? What, what class is that at Iowa State? It is HTFS 491. 491. Yes. And what is that? Tell it's, us non non Iowa State <laughs> students what that means. It's basically for both of our majors, which is what we've said before, child adult and family services. We both you have to have an internship to finish your entire undergrad. So this one is you can basically have your internship anywhere as long as you get it verified by the internship coordinator, and you have to do a certain amount of work like journaling, discussion boards. What else do we have to do? Yeah, the journaling, I think, mm -hmm. is, is one of the, the biggest things. Work. Yeah, yeah. That, and then the actual work, intern. well, yeah, <laughs> the actual internship work as well, so. Yeah. And, and so, um, and in your case, it needed to, to be with working with families, mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm trying to pull that out because, you know, yes. I think that that's yeah. what libraries are about mm -hmm. as well, and we think about libraries, you know, focusing on books and reading when, in fact, you know, there's a larger umbrella mm -hmm. there too that it's working with the people that are actually coming in and out in the family and in, in the youth department. Yeah. It's working with those families as well, um, both internally and outside. And and now, uh, Morgan, you talked a little bit about that you were hired by Raising Readers in Story County and the Ames Read subcommittee of that group um, specifically to do this tutoring. And so can you, or coordinate the tutoring um, program throughout the community over the summer. Can you do, explain that program a little bit uh, about what's going on and who's involved and, and the how tutoring the training? program? Yes. Um, so what we've done is um, offered free tutoring to K through three students um, in the Ames community and we've actually got um, quite a few siblings who are a little bit above that but um, we've definitely tailored the program to every different child's specific needs um, and with that, we uh, put a job posting on the Iowa State board, and we got um, quite a bit of feedback from Iowa State students looking to get some volunteer opportunities um, with 
reading with children, um, some retired people from around Ames, as well as um, other community members. And we've put them through um, Dr. Bear's training, which is, um, he's done several of them for us. He's a literacy professor at Iowa State. Um, and we've taken his program and tailored it to our needs and tutoring the kids. And just to kind of reference our viewers, um, last month's show was with Diane Schmidt, who mm -hmm. is a member of, of Raising Readers, and Dr. Bear, who um, is the literacy instructor that you're talking about. Yes. So this training then that these uh, volunteers have, have received is, you know, how to work with that student and enhance their reading activity and, and help them out. Yes. And, and make it a, a better experience for them and, and hopefully keep them at that, you know, we talk about that grade level reading that mm -hmm. they were at when they finished their, like if they were in second grade, the, the end of the second grade year, so that when they start third grade, they can be at that same level or possibly above yeah. um, that level too. So, um, and your job specifically then is coordinating the volunteers and the places that are, this is happening and the children. Yes. Um, so how many, how many children do we have that are being tutored this summer? We have close to 70 um, wow. and that's just community children. That's not including our work at um, ACPC and another child care center in Ames. So that's... I think that's yep, UCC. Yep, UCC. So that's just including um, families from the Ames School District who we were able to get the information out to. And we actually have a couple of children who aren't from the Ames School District, but who are in the Ames community, so... So, and, and then um, when does this all take place? Is it... Is it during the day, at nighttime? Or? Um, most of them are during the day um, for either an hour or an hour and a half. We have one location that is um, at Bethesda Lutheran Church and that takes place um, in the nighttime hours. We found a lot of parents really had a need um, for night hours. They really wanted their child to get that one-on-one -on -one tutoring but um, had prior engagements, whether it be um, child care or just busy schedules, so we were able to accommodate that, which was really good because we have quite a few families at that location. Yeah. And I happened to be a, a substitute mm -hmm. tutor, and I was at the Bethesda, and it's a very nice space that yes. they've, they've given us to use during the course of the summer. And, and I know the families that arrived and, you know, the family that I helped, the young man that I helped, um, was very, very excited about doing the reading, pro, you know, reading with yes. me. And we had a little activity that they got to create you know we read of course but it, it's more than just reading the books too it's that relationship mm -hmm. with that book and and so we had a little activity that we had two cups and a paper clip and I think three paper clips and a pipe cleaner and a straw and and then we he built something out of it and then we wrote about it because the writing about the experience is as important as the reading so that it's that holistic approach mm -hmm. that is um, very cool. And it, his eyes were just all lit up. I mean, you could just see how happy he was that he was being successful. And, and uh, so I, I was very excited. Yeah. <laughs> it, it gave me quite a bit of fulfillment as well. <laughs> yeah, and we found that kids really enjoy and um, are kind of surprised that it's not just sitting down and reading a book. We have different activities, like you said, that they get to write a story about or um, while reading a book, you know, stop midway through and have the child attempt to make their own creative ending and then they get to um, keep those in their reading folder and read them back to their tutors. So they just think that it's the craziest thing that they get to finish the ending to a book and, yeah. and learn that way. Yeah, and, and again, it, it's a great skill to have at, at your home too, not, not necessarily, mm -hmm. it's not just, it's not so important to read that book from page one to page 40 or 50 or whatever it is. It, it's that experience, that interaction. Um, the research, you know, shows that, that that will empower that child more to be a better reader in the end. So, yeah, no, it isn't doing worksheets and filling in the no, blanks and, not at all. and being tested about no. the book. It's, it's really an experience, a positive experience um, to, for, for the kids to... Um, and so you you talked about the number of kids and how, so how many volunteers um, do do we have approximately there also um, being volunteering being tutors and yep. coordinating and um, community volunteers we have about 60 so that includes um, some Iowa State students 
and just the community members, like I mentioned. And then we have about 10 America Reads America Counts students, which is a work study tutoring program through the university. So um, they actually get wages for their work with us, and they've been great to work with. Um, they're at one of the sites that I supervise, and they have prior experience and new ideas that they're able to bring, which is always great that they have different activities that we can do with literacy and just so much excitement because it's something that all of them are very involved in. Yeah, and we've been doing now um, the coordination. I know that it has taken a little bit longer than what we thought, but it's really getting kicked off and, yep. and rolling. The ball is rolling now. In the, um, how long will it go through then until August? Yep, until mid-August. Mid-August. Um, so we wanted to give the kids as well as um, a lot of the tutors um, and the teachers who are creating the lesson plans for our tutors to use um, that week or two break before school starts to kind of have some downtime and be able to settle into okay. their school schedule. So is there still, if I had a child um, that I wanted to have some help or some tutoring to be done, what would I do to go about getting that done or is it too late? No, it, it's definitely not too late. We still have slots open in most of our um, locations and are very accommodating. We still have tutors who are willing to um, take on another child. They're really invested in it. So um, to contact either myself or Diana and we can work on getting that into place as soon as possible. And, and so what, where would that contact be at? Um, if you want to share with our viewers where, how they could contact you. Um, through email is probably the best. Okay. I have um, my email is morganseleski at gmail.com. Okay. Um, so that's probably so, the easiest So as way. soon as they can to get yeah, that started. And, and I think it's also um, neat that we have it in different areas of the community mm -hmm. so and at different times. So hopefully there's a time and a place that yeah, will match definitely. up with the time and place that your child will get. That's wonderful. It's a, a really wonderful thing that, yeah. that is happening in the community. Um, the, the other thing that, that, you're, that both of you are doing is this outreach, mm -hmm. um, obviously. And, but, um, Amy, you've been going out and, and uh, presenting our story times at our mm -hmm. bookmobile stops mm -hmm. and then also going and making some contact with some of, the, some of our low-income mm -hmm. um, places, yes. apartment places, yeah, apartment, uh, yeah. however we want to call them. Um, so t can you tell us and share a little bit of your experiences that are happening at those, at like Laverne mm -hmm. and, and Old Dirtchard mm -hmm. and the uh, Eastwood? Mm -hmm. uh, well, so far I have my bookmobiles that I've been going to, story times that are really fun. I've been kind of with the th going with the themes of all the summer programs. Like this week is Animals Underground, so I'm doing stuff with gophers and I'm making hedgehogs for them and stuff. It's pretty fun. But book story times, I'm at, I go to Sawyer, Old Orchard, and what was my last one? Fairway is my other one on Monday, when, Monday Tuesday, and Wednesday. And it's about 6.30 and I read, we read, we do, we sing songs, do crafts, do flannel boards, which are always really fun for me. Um, and then I'm also going out to Laverne Apartment Buildings, Eastwood Apartments, and Windsor Point and doing similar activities so, uh, as my story times with the kids. So kind of taking the program yeah. to where the kids mm -hmm. are at. And Which is really great for the kids since they might not be able to make it to all the bookmobile story times that are in the community. So Yeah, and transportation is always oh, a, yeah. an issue too when you have a daycare or what, you mm -hmm. know, the, there's lots of issues that yeah. go to and that. Yeah, parents that, working and stuff is always a problem. And, or, and, and I know that we've done a, a big a big quote unquote um, kind of celebration type mm -hmm. of thing at each at Laverne yep. and Eastwood and Windsor Point where we went and did some crafts. Yeah, and, which is that um, was fun. Kick started mm -hmm. with the bookmobile, so they were able to to check out some books and yep. start the reading program. Um, and those were very well received, mm -hmm. and um, I had a good turnout. I had a good them, turnout, so. and I had a good time. Yeah. You had a good. I, had I a think good time. we all had think, a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worm um, chocolate. Putting yeah. things went really well. I think the kids um, love those. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but that's also a program where you're repeating it and going mm -hmm. back to the to the different um, apartment buildings to kind of build that relationship mm -hmm. and give them that positive experience. Definitely, I've already gotten a few really good relationships with some of the kids just by a couple of times meeting with them. So. Yeah. 
it's been really fun so far. It's really neat that the, you know, and, and again, that the reading isn't just about reading yeah. the book. It's the reading is the experience, the mm-hmm. whole experience in, in developing. Um, but I, I wanted, you talked about the bookmobile. Um, we did have a change in our bookmobile stop because you mm-hmm. were um, on Friday evenings going to University mm-hmm. Village. And unfortunately, due to um, the changes um, and the safe places mm-hmm. for us to be able to go when there is a storm or whatever, we're not able to, to go there anymore. Mm-hmm. But I do note, viewers, that we are working on finding another spot and, and a place for our, our bookmobile to go in addition to there or someplace close. So mm-hmm. we are working very hard on that. Um, but the other events that you're attending are our family events mm-hmm. in the park yep. um, that seem you're helping with the reading programs yes. and, and checking them out. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, every it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We're in different parks throughout the community. Brighton, what are all of them? I can't remember all the parks now. Inis Grove, Inis Grove, and Daily Park, Daily Park and then Banshell are all the four parks that we're going to throughout the week. Um, we're there Monday is from two to three, and then the rest of the week is nine okay. or ten to eleven. We're there at nine. I'm, yes, I'm there at the nine. Park. Almost <laughs> all my hours are getting messed up, but uh, basically there's a whole bunch of little programming going on this week since we're doing Animals Underground. I'm not exactly sure, but I know we're doing stuff with bunnies and other little things like that. And then I am running the summer reading program table in which kids can bring their reading programs order. to, they can either sign up, they can get their prizes there, and they can start doing their bonus prizes if they're already there. So it's they can basically do whatever they need to do at the, that they do at the library out at the parks, so, which is yeah. really nice. And so, so this is a program we've discussed a, um kind of showed this to you uh, viewers um, before on our show but um, it's still not too late this goes through the end of August Mm -hmm. and so you can still you and your child can still um, create the paths and read along the way and earn the prizes along the way and um, for those of you that are already done with the prizes which we we had on June 5th like five days after the program started um, you know we we have some wonderful sponsors with the cookie at Subway and the pie at Village Inn Mm. and Wheatsfield Fruit Leather the apples at Hy-Vee but also our Ames Parks and Rec has been just fabulous Mm -hmm. this year um, letting us use the parks as well as the pool party that we'll have at the end of the summer and the ice arena passes that we have and then of course they get at the very last trail is the the book that they get to have to permanently have in their home so mm-hmm. they don't have to ever have to worry about returning it and they can have it wherever they want. But if they get all that done, they can do this this bonus card mm-hmm. um, to get their bonus prizes or chances to win those bonus prizes um, and work on this all summer long. And so are our tutoring students as well. They're, they're working on their reading programs and getting that free book to keep at the house Um, because that also is a very important part is to have that book always available that important book that they've chosen themselves Mm -hmm. um, that is their right reading level and um, and for them ready to read whenever they would like to whether it's in the middle of the night or right away in the morning or midday Mm -hmm. it's there and they don't have to worry about returning it to the library or getting any fines which you know, that is part of the library experience at times, if, yeah. um, but not the, the positive part that we always like to promote. <laughs> but uh, so it sounds like we're doing really wonderful I things. So. And, and I um, can't tell the viewers and, and you all enough that, you know, we couldn't do this without having our extra helpers, our interns. And um, these ladies are doing a fabulous job this summer um, empowering our community because uh, it does truly take a, a community to raise or a village to raise a child, yeah. if I go back to that thing. <laughs> um, and these two ladies are doing a fantastic job in empowering our, our readers, our soon-to-be readers, to be successful in that in that manner. And um, the library thanks you. And I know, speaking on behalf of Raising Readers, since I'm on that board too, and Ames Reads, that they thank you as well. Um, so, And our community thanks you. So good luck with your future. And um, so we'll see you a lot yet during the course of the summer. And so thank you very much. 
And thank you for watching our show. And um, if you are interested in having your child tutored or you know of someone that needs to be tutored or, and have that experience, or you yourself would like to help in our tutoring experience, be sure and, and contact Morgan or contact us at the library and um, we'll make sure that you get hooked up with the right people. Until next time, thank you for viewing.